as you go into this experience with Desmond, is it different for you? Does it, did it feel different having gone through that before? Uh, not really. For me, it's, it's not different. It just, uh, I guess it has subsided, all that type of excitement. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, it's kind of bringing back, you know, memories of what we did with uh, Marcus when he went in the league. And uh, like you said, it's like deja vu, you know, but it's, uh, it's just as exciting and I'm feeling the same way I felt back then. Real happy for him that he's, you know, accomplished what he's tried to do this far, you know. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, I guess after 10 years of football, you know, it just next, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you mentioned, Mrs. Trufant, that Marcus uh, 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 Desmond was 10 years old when Marcus went to the NFL. Yeah. I mean, as he grew up and saw his brother and then brothers doing what he obviously wanted to do, when did that kind of kick in for him? And he said, okay, this is my path, this is my goal. Because you said he was athletic, but when did that kind of focus in? I think, well, he'll guess, I guess have to answer it, but I'm thinking maybe um, in high school, but maybe it was middle school because he, he was athletic also. You know, he played basketball, though. Mm -hmm. he didn't uh, he didn't play uh, football in middle school because they didn't have a football team. So that's what I'm thinking, you know, possibly. Uh, he did flag football. High school, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he played some, a lot of good flag football because we were always there with him, you know, in the elementary, you know, track and uh, baseball and soccer. And then in middle school, uh, the basketball and uh, the flag football <laughs> and a little baseball again. And then, of course, high school, track, uh, football, and uh, basketball. And then Marcus and Desmond both went to Wilson High in Tacoma? Yeah, they all went to Wilson. All went. All three. Yeah. All three, and they were all coached by uh, Coach Clegg. Wow. And uh, actually, uh, Coach Clegg, a very uh, uh, humble story, is that he said he was going to wait to retire until Desmond got to Wilson. Mm. And this was when Marcus was drafted. Oh, really? Right. So he, <laughs> yeah, he said he was going to wait until Desmond came to Wilson so that he could have all three uh, uh, True Fox mm -hmm. boys uh, under his belt as being a coach. But actually, he's still a coach now, uh, and he did coach Desmond all four years. So uh, it's, it's a beautiful story, yeah. You were 10 when Marcus was drafted, your mom said. As Marcus went through the league and did all the things that he's done, a lot of accomplishments, how did that factor into – a, your decision to play football, and B, your knowledge of the game and what you learned as you went along. How much did your brother influence you on the field and just personally? Uh, a lot of influence. Um, I always wanted to play football, though, when I was young. and I played a lot of sports when I was young, with basketball, ran track, things like that. But, you know, really seeing my brother um, go first round, be drafted, you know, and uh, playing in my home city, I mean home state, and um, watching it for 10 plus years, it definitely motivated me to want to play football. Yeah. And Marcus, as you saw him come up, when, when, when did he really hit your radar as a football player? Well, I guess to be honest, it was kind of one of those things, you know, I'm 10 years older, so, you know, we're out outside um, in the backyard, we're doing our thing, we're playing sports with the neighborhood kids and stuff like that. And, of course, you got Dez. He's trying to jump in the game. <laughs> and he's not quite keeping up, but he's doing his thing. He's doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. He's, uh, I mean, he's shaking bait. And not only on the football uh, field, like in the grass in the backyard, but on the basketball court as well. He's able to do his thing. So as he grew up and went through school, uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, he was always a, uh, always a standout. Mm -hmm. So, you know. As um, a person who went through that, who kind of did the same thing, I, I kind of see uh, seeing Dez kind of rising above everybody and um, kind of kind of separating himself from the crowd. In the athletic and personal temperament, and this is a question for both of you, how are they different? How are how are especially Marcus and Desmond, the, the ten years later? How are they different? Just as people, just as kids. Um, different, I guess. Uh, they do have sort of different personalities and I think that came about because um, 
the closeness of Isaiah and Marcus, you know, they kind of grew up together. Mm -hmm. And they was kind of out of the way when Dez came along. So he, uh, I guess he was, I guess he a little bit stronger because he was independent, mm -hmm. you know, and he did, he was that guy who wanted to do everything on his own. And I think that made him stronger. He didn't want to piggyback on his brothers, what they did and all of that. But uh, they do have different personalities that I, mm -hmm. I will vouch for that. <laughs> 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 and then, of course, I mean, and the, you mentioned not wanting to piggyback, but if you're Desmond, I mean, Isaiah's been at Wilson, or, uh, you know, Isaiah's been there, Marcus has been there, and now here comes the third guy. I mean, did he ever express to you that, wow, the expectations are high, or did he feed off that, or how did that affect him, or did it affect him at all? Was he just able to shake it off and go? I think he fed off of it, and uh, he uh, always was proud of his brothers for, you know, their accomplishments, and uh, he wanted to... Uh, go out there and, and work and accomplish, you know, what they did or, or even more. Yeah. Uh, but it, it wasn't to the point of sibling, you know, sibling rivalry, you know, but it was like, okay, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do my thing too. And uh, that's what he did. How are you, since Marcus, you have the more football experience, mm -hmm. um, how are you different as players? When you kind of scout yourself and scout Desmond, how are you guys different? Just as cornerback. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the hard questions. Well, um, <laughs> differences, um, I guess first I'll start with the similarities. I see a lot of, simple, uh, a lot of similarities as far as the uh, aggressiveness on the field. The, um, Dez is a very competitive player on the field and uh, off the field as well. Just... Um, Simple stuff like on the basketball court during the holidays and stuff like that. When we get together, he's just as competitive then as he is on the court. I mean, uh, on the football field. But uh, yeah, he's he's a little bit more fiery than I am. I would say uh, on the field, uh, maybe talks a little bit more trash. But sometimes <laughs> that's just how it works. You know, players are different, but it's all about the same goal. It's all about how you get yourself ready to play. And me. Um, I may be a little quieter, but Dez may be a little bit more, uh, I would say, boisterous about what he's doing on the field. But it's all about getting to the same goal, all about making plays and making it happen and having fun. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a lot of similarities, you know, um, footwork, um, uh, speed, and um, tackling, just being a well-rounded corner. I think that's what we both bring to the table. No, I have watched the Seahawks since you came into the league. I've seen you bark at people. I'm just saying. <laughs> like I said, it's always good fun. I, mean, I do a little bit as you get into the game, but I think Dez even takes it a step above, and it's nothing wrong with that. Had to be a pretty competitive household, though. you got three boys, and they're all, you know. Yeah, it was, it was more competitive uh, cause with Isaiah because Marcus was kind of away in college and stuff, but uh, him, and Isaiah didn't uh, back down on him, and so I think that's where he got, Desmond got a lot of toughness and, you know, going ahead and, uh, doing things uh, in spite of how hard it was because mm -hmm. in basketball they was very competitive they would race with each other and was very competitive but nobody ever said I'm gonna give you a break Desmond because you're the younger brother right it's like we're gonna go full speed you come on with us so I think that's where that go get it mm -hmm. you know go get to it attitude came from was more almost expected of Desmond because of kind of the the history and the litany and the you know the that legacy I think uh, that we had heard some of that uh, through the media mm. that uh, they was thinking Desmond had all these shoes to fill mm -hmm. and Desmond made it a point that he uh, was going to do his own thing and he didn't want no special treatment because of his brother. He wanted to earn what he accomplished out there, you know, not just because he's Marcus and not their little brother that you're going to get special privileges. And he didn't want it like that. Yeah. And he went out and he said, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing, and you know, because that was their thing, this is my thing now, you know. Um, Desmond, watching you uh, during Senior Bowl week in Mobile, we talked a little bit there. Uh, it was pretty clear that you had the just the most practiced and kind of finished technique um, as far as your back pedal, your turn and run, jumping routes, things like that. Um, it, it stood out and it was mentioned a lot. 
how do you get from, I mean, I know you went to API after Washington. When did you feel like it really locked in for you technique-wise? Obviously, the NFL's the next step. There are different things to learn. But when you went to Mobile, did you feel like, not like I've got this on lockdown, but how confident were you that it was going to turn out the way it did? Um, I think from the first day, you know. Um, well, first, I got to give credit to my uh, position coaches at a uh, University of Washington, uh, Dante Williams. He was my corners coach my uh, senior year. And uh, we really worked on technique a lot in the summer, mm -hmm. you know, just being patient, slowing my game down, just refining the little things, you know, and uh, I got to have to give a lot of credit to him. But, um, yeah, once I got to Mobile, you know, once I seen the competition and I seen the first set of one-on-ones, you know, my confidence just shot up because, you know, I just I just continued to do what they taught me uh, at U University of Washington. I didn't change up. I didn't try to make up something new. I just did what I've been doing and was confident with it, and it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Marcus, when you came into the league in 03, it was, a, it was a very heavy cover to Tampa, too. I mean, obviously, you know, this playing in Seattle, a lot more press, certainly on your team. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is the NFL different? How, is, how are defenses played differently than when you came in? What, what does he have to look forward to in that regard? Well, um, first off, I think what he doesn't, what he doesn't have, um, he can't look forward to, I guess. You know, the game has changed a little bit as far as the uh, physicality of the league, which it hits. And which has been like eliminated that. pretty much. Yeah, so you can't do <laughs> a lot of the certain stuff you could do when I first came into the league, the hits and the celebrations after the hits over guys and all that kind of stuff. You know, they've been scaling back on that every year. So um, I think the things he has um, to look forward to, it's just the fun of the game, the fun nature of the game. Um, after you break it down, it's still – going out and playing football. It's a little bit more complex as far as X and O's, but it's still football, so I know it's going to have a blast, and um, it doesn't really matter what team he goes to. It's going to be fun, and he's going to pick it up just like that because after you get through the, the nerves and, okay, I'm in the NFL now, mm -hmm. it's just football. Desmond, how much of those nerves are maybe mitigated a little bit by the fact that you have a brother who's been, well, two brothers, I and mean, we haven't even talked about Isaiah yet, right. which we will in a second. Um, because you have the rare opportunity to talk to people and sort of live the NFL through the guys who have been there, how much do you think that will help you? Help me a lot, you know. Like you said, there's going to be some new things that I'm not used to or things, you know, I might, I might take the wrong way or whatever, you know, and I can just ask him for advice or ask him what would he do or what has he been through through his career. So it's definitely a plus to have that. But, uh you know, whatever happens, I'm going to just, uh, whichever team I go to, I'm going to just work hard, um, just take everything in stride, try to learn as much as possible, and just go have fun. It's obviously more important to you that they're good people as opposed to good football players, and that seems to be the case in all three of, you know, with all three of these guys. Marcus is a solid guy. He's got his foundation, which you, Mrs. Trufant, run. As you look back on it now, having raised them, Marcus, having been in the NFL for now 11 years, Isaiah's in, Desmond's coming in. How does it feel, just maybe reflect on that that decade and now it's just starting over again? I mean, there's pride, of course, but how, how does that make you both feel, just to, to know that it's been this way? It makes me feel uh, thankful. First of all, I said, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful and uh, proud and, you know, uh, you know just, just happy. You know, just happy for him. And it's like, wow. Uh, you know, we didn't, I don't count kind us of like doing anything so much special or extraordinary from anyone else, uh, except for, uh, you know, it's just, I think they had a God given talent, all of them. And, uh, <laughs> and it came in threes. <laughs> and, you know, so that's why I said, okay, this this is a good thing. This is, this is a really good thing. So, mm -hmm. Thankful, grateful, and thankful for God, and uh, and just feel blessed, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you, sir? Basically, uh, the same thing. I'm, you know, proud of them because um, of the effort they put out. And they they set out to do something, and they did it. Yeah. You know, that was that's big time for me. If you say you're gonna do it, do it. You know, as I tell people all the time, when. Um, they first start out, all of them, when they were real little, when they just started getting affiliated with any sport. 
not even knowing it. They'll say, yeah. And when it's time to come to go to practice, somebody don't want to go to practice. <laughs> no, you go going to practice because <laughs> you say you go do this. And that we instilled that in them when they were little boys. <laughs> and now I see that paying off because when they know they got to go to work out, they got to go to the gym, they, they're going to be where they're supposed to be. And that's even with Marcus, uh, you know, and Isaiah, who's already there, you on the schedule. You got to be there. They want you there. They don't want to hear excuses. Mm -hmm. And we taught that to them. You know, excuses just that ain't good enough. You yeah. Know? And it grows on the kids, you know. And just to sit back and see that energy they put into doing their stuff, you know, that makes me proud. Now, between now, you were in Wazoo, Eastern right. Eastern Washington. You went to the Huskies, and how outraged were you about that? By the way. <laughs> I always tell people, man, I never wanted to push theirs to one school or the uh, other. I just wanted him to make his own choice, make his own decision. Uh, of course, you know I'm a cool all the way to the core, uh -huh. so you know it was one of those things. I know he wanted to, uh, you know, he wanted to walk down his own path, and he wanted to be his own man, and he wanted to, uh, he kind of wanted to pave his own way. And I understand that he didn't want to go to Washington State, but I had already did my thing. Kind of, he wanted to start fresh and start new, so that was cool. And then we have Isaiah, who is not only the middle kid, but went to school in the middle of right. the state. exactly. I don't East know how much more representative this can be. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an interesting situation because he's in the NFL, but went to a smaller school, didn't have the same sort of high profile, but he got there too. Um, what, what, does that come up, that sort of difference in profile? Have you guys talked about that? Does it mean something to him that he's maybe, not that anyone has more impetus or imperative to, to get or stay in the league, mm -hmm. but it's almost like that different thing where you were a first round pick, you probably will be, he wasn't. D does that affect him at all? I wouldn't think so. I think um, his um, course to the NFL was so much harder. He had to uh, he had to do so much more and put so much more um, just fight into it, uh, playing in the Arena League, playing in the, uh, in the UNFL. It's, uh, those are tough leagues, man. I've been to a couple of his games when we played in the Arena, and that's a crazy game. And I don't know if I got that in me. Is there anything more true fonts that the NFL has to worry about? Anyone, anyone else? <laughs> we got... We got Two little one, two little boys. Mm -hmm. uh, they got two boys, but they're young. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, but, so maybe uh, 10 or 15 years from now, we yeah, gotta, we gotta do this all over I again. I might be pushing a wheel in a wheelchair or something. <laughs> <laughs> I get to see them play yeah. that because they all doing the same thing. I see the same thing in my grandkids. You know? Yeah. The, that activity. How that drive. Activity, how they yeah. Drive. So hopefully they'll come on and do something too. Yeah. yeah because actually, uh, Isaiah's wife, uh, she had a little T-shirt for the oldest little boy, and she just sent me a picture, and it said, I think it says, like, the next NFL uh, drafted player. And it's like, okay. And so I'm doing the math. I said, okay, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> We're still young enough to be here for that. Yeah. Yeah. So 2003, 2013, so 2033. Oh, we'll, wow. See, I we'll didn't put that into we'll perspective. We'll all just do it all over again. <laughs> yep, that yeah. would be great. Well, thanks very much.